All right, welcome back. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at this ASUS 2080 Strix. Now, I mean, we could look at performance and comparison and all that stuff, but I mean, this is really not a hot discussed item right now. Everything is 3070s, 3080s, 3090s. This is a 2080 Strix by ASUS. I've had this card for about two years and this thing has been phenomenal. Great overclocks on it, smooth performance. Um, I really enjoyed it. I've definitely enjoyed this card and I'm still keeping it because I can't get myself a 2080, not a 20, I can't get myself a 3080 or 3090, but on my new build, we're going to put this in and she needs a little bit of love. So we're going to give her some love today. After two years, my temperatures have been beginning to creep up. Nothing astronomical, but enough where she needs some love and we'll go give her some love today. So we're going to open her up. We're going to change out the thermal pad. I figure it'd take you long. This is a very easy car to open up so you can see what it looks like, how easy you can, it is to change the thermal paste. And we'll take it from there. So it looks like we got four screws in the middle. Let's see if that gets in the camera. There's four screws right over here. Now this is the controversial screw because this is the warranty screw. Now by taking this off, apparently ASUS will never warranty or repair my card, but that's up for a matter of debate and discussion. Some people say they can't legally do that. Some people say they can do it. I don't know. All I know is, is that my thermal paste is, I could tell it's dried up because my cooling is not like what it used to be and the fans are running a little higher. So, and I'm still running the same overclocks. All right, so now that we got that off, what I like to do is just kind of wiggle and pry and just kind of see, don't force anything. Never want to do that. And let's see, so there's more things holding it on as I can see. So I guess we're gonna have to take out all these screws over here. Wait, nope, there we go, bingo, comes right off. That was very anticlimactic, but very easy. So for a company that doesn't want you to do this, they sure enough make it easy. All right, so let's see if we can get this in. And as you can see, my thermal paste is, yeah, she's dried up, she's a little dusty over here. So I'm gonna take off our thermal paste, just wipe it off. I usually like to wipe it off dry just to kind of get the chunks together. Yeah, this thing is coming out really dry. So two years of decent gaming and some overclocking. I got a good clock on this card. Uh, Silicone lottery for the win on this, and then not to mention Asus's cooling solution for this is freaking phenomenal. I mean, all right, so that's not too bad over there. My thermal pads actually came out in one piece, so they look beautiful. We're not even gonna mess with that. Unless they're broken, don't change them. These are not broken, they're not extremely squished, they're not dirty, I don't see anything that says that I need to worry about this. So we just need to focus on the thermal paste. All right, so over here, we're just gonna kind of do the same thing and we're gonna clean this off with alcohol. I just wanna get off the gritty chunks that I can before I do anything else. All right, so there's a few reasons for doing this. Number one, performance. Better temperatures equal more performance. You can sustain your boost clocks better, they're more consistent. And like I said, lately I've, I haven't had bad boost clocks, but I just wanna get better boost clocks. You know, my temperatures have ramped up a little bit. The fans are starting to get a little louder as far as speed. So I do see them climbing and I, that's consistent with this uh, pace going bad. Could I have left it alone and dealt with it maybe for another six, however long it takes me to get the next video card? Absolutely. Definitely could have left it alone and been fine with it, but you know, all or nothing. Not to mention another reason for doing this is if I ever decide to sell this card or give it to the next user, you know, most people don't care and it's like, it's not my problem once I sell it. Uh, I like to kind of give whoever buys my products or if I give it away, like, you know, upgrade it to my family, you know, I want them to have this card and be able to enjoy it as much as I did when I got it. You know, let them get their great experience with it. So as you can see, very clean, not too bad. So now let's get some rubbing alcohol. That's typically what I use. Now, if this was like caked on really good and it wasn't coming off easy, then typically I might use some Goo Gone to kind of help break it up. There are some uh, companies that make a solution specifically for this, but I've always just used rubbing alcohol and the combination of Goo Gone and I've never had an issue. 
So let's just get that in there. There we go. She looks shiny. She looks pretty. I think she's going to be very happy. All right. Now, while you're in here, I keep my computers very clean. I mean, I dust them all the time. I periodically clean my filters. I mean, at least twice a month, I'm in there with a dust blower. So if you were in here and this thing was caked with dust or anything like that, now's the time to take the blower and just blow everything out. But my card looks fantastic, and I don't see anything that says that it's been neglected, it's been abused, or there's dust culminating anywhere. So I'm very happy with that. So let's wipe off the heat sink over here. I know it came off clean and it has a nice mirror finish on it. Let's give it a little bit of alcohol. Now when doing this, I like to use these shop towels. I've used them for years. They don't leave that little fibrous materials like paper towels or toilet paper, which in my opinion you should never use. And they work fine. Another thing you can do is use the microfiber towels. That's actually probably preferred because they don't scratch. I mean, this is not gonna leave a scratch. I mean, it already has scratches from manufacturing, but ideally a microfiber towel is the way to go. That way you're not putting scratches or anything like that in there. All right, so that's good. Let me go grab my thermal paste and let's put some goop on it and put it back together. All right, we went ahead, we used our thermal grizzly. I've been using this for years and I've never had issues with thermal grizzlies uh, paste. They perform quite well. Arctic is another good one. I've used Noctua as one. Those three are the tip three typical ones that I typically use when I'm working on these or put new thermal paste as they're good quality. Now I've used the Cooler Master one, uh, not the Cooler Master, the uh, Corsair one, and I wasn't a fan of it. Did a video on that one, and it's been a little controversial, but long story short, if you did watch that video, it was a bad tube, it was a bad batch. I wasn't the only one bringing it back. They did, uh, Best Buy did right, they gave me a new tube of it. It wasn't as separated as the uh, video showed, and it worked better, it did, but you know. Now when I put in the thermal paste on it, this is just something I do, I just kind of sit it and just kind of rock it just give a little pressure just just to kind of help it spread out better all right now that that's done i'm gonna flip this thing back over and this is simple this is probably the easiest graphics cards i've ever had to change thermal paste on and just kind of line everything up grab your screwdriver and get everything back together Thing I like to do too is crisscross pattern and I don't like to tighten everything down just yet just kind of hold it in and then tighten it after effect in case something has to move or be repositioned or something like that just line them up because you can see I don't know if it comes out in the camera but put it right over here as you can see when you're doing this the hole's a little off centered so if you tightened everything up and you try to get that in there there's a good chance you're going to strip that screw and that's definitely no bueno definitely definitely no bueno so don't do that i like to kind of get all that tape i kind of hate when they do this because it messes up your aesthetic so i just take off the little warranty void screw sticker over here and just kind of peel at it that way i put my card back together everything looks pretty i mean you'll really won't see it or notice it unless you're looking for it but i'll know it's there and yeah, let's get that cleaned up. All right, cleaned up better. Let's pop this last screw in. That should be a lot better. Now, I've talked about this in a bunch of videos when tightening computer screws. Nice and easy. I use one hand and just two fingers and a thumb, and I've never had an issue with it being over tightened. See? There you go. Two fingers and a thumb. I've seen people do it like this, and which is fine. I mean, but in case anybody has a ref, asks what a good reference for how, what the tension and tightening is, this has always been my go-to. 
and I've never had a screw stripped. I've never had an issue with lack of tension on it. So just making sure these push downs because I'm technically not using the right bit for this. Just kind of put a little downward pressure while I twist. There we go. Done. Simple. She still looks great. She still looks brand spanking new. And this card should get me my temps like I just had it when they were brand new. So just want to do this quick video just showing the Asus 2080 Strix, how to take it apart, change the thermal paste, you know, in case somebody was curious about it or wanted to see if it was hard. This is actually probably the easiest video card I've ever done it. I mean, this cooler is so massive and there's so many wires and screws and everything. But then when you look at it, it's four up here, two over here, and you're done. Clean it out, clean surface, put some good gobbledygook on there. I mean, whatever one you prefer. I like Thermal Grizzly, like I said, and you're good to go. You know, and that's about it. Just, you know, wipe off your back. Pop her in the computer, do a couple of stress tests to kind of burn in the thermal, uh, the thermal paste a little better. Because once it settles in there and kind of burns in better, you'll get better performance on it that I found. And you're good to go. So definitely comment down below. Let me know what you think. Opinions, thoughts, another video card you want me to see take apart if I have it or if I'm able to get it. I'd love to get a 30 series, but, you know, one day. Patience, patience. Um, thanks for watching. And we'll see what we come up with next.